Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and uh, what we were discussing, we were discussing about the chromatography. So, in this uh, chromatography series, we were discussing about the different chromatography techniques. In the previous uh, lecture, we have discussed about the ion exchange chromatography and now in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the hydrophobic interaction chromatography. So, if you recall, what we have what we have said is that the protein is having the different physiochemical properties and all these physiochemical properties can be exploited in different chromatography techniques. What we have discussed so far is that the charge how the charge present on the protein can be utilized to perform the ion exchange chromatography and now in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the hydrophobic interaction chromatography which utilizes the hydrophobic patches present on the protein surfaces. Now what is the basic principle of the hydrophobic chromatography? Hydrophobic interaction chromatography exploits the ability of a strong interaction between the hydrophobic groups attached to the matrix and the hydrophobic patches present on the analyte such as the protein. So, what happens how the hydrophobic patches are being placed in the protein is that when the protein is being synthesized as a single polypeptide chain, as soon as the polypeptide is being released from the ribosome, it starts folding because of the intramolecular interaction between the amino acid side chain and there are additional interaction uh, present and because of that the initially it folds and then it folds into a multiple ways. The purpose of this folding is to protect the hydrophobic groups from the aqueous environment what is present outside. How to achieve that is that the protein is going to place all the hydrophobic groups within the core of the protein as well as the you, it is going to keep all the hydrophilic amino acids on the outside because the outside is the aqueous environment. So, it is going to maintain a hydrophobic environment in the center. So, what is the what is the achievement by the protein is that it is actually keeping the hydrophobic amino acids in the center and the hydrophilic amino acids and the periphery because outside is aqueous which means aqueous means outside is water molecule. So, that is why the, uh, the polar amino acid or the uh, all the charge amino acids are present outside whereas the hydrophobic amino acids are present inside. So, the question comes if the hydrophobic amino acids are present inside, how these hydrophobic amino acids could be available to make a interaction with the hydrophobic groups attached to the matrix? Because that is what you are supposed to achieve. So, what happen is when you add the salt to the proteins, okay, the salt is having the higher solubility to the to the water molecules compared to the protein. So, in this process salt is actually removing the water from the protein molecules and in that process it actually exposes the hydrophobic patches and by adding addition of a low amount of salt you are actually increasing the solubility of a protein and this effect is called as the salting in effect whereas when you add the more amount of salt the hydrophobic what is being exposed onto the surface actually allows the protein to clump together and that is how it is actually decreasing the uh, protein solubility and that effect is known as the salting out. So, with the addition of the salt you are doing the two things initially you are removing the uh, the water water molecules what is present outside the proteins and that is how you are increasing the solubility as well as you are exposing the hydrophobic patches 
once you add the more amount of salt you are actually reducing the solubility simply because the hydrophobic patches are interacting with each other and making a bigger clumps so this is what you have to see the, this is the uh, when you add the salt the pro, the, the when you the salt is actually taking up the water what is present in the hydration shell and that's how it is actually uh, increasing the solubility of the protein but it goes up to a limit okay after that it actually removes more amount of salt and that's how the hydrophobic patches are being exposed and that's how it reduces the solubility this increase in solubility is known as the salting in effect the decrease in solubility is known as the salting out effect so in the hydrophobic interaction chromatography what you are supposed to do is you are going to add the salt in such a way so that it is actually reaching to this point and by reaching to this point it is actually uh, exposing the hydrophobic groups and that's how you can be able to utilize these hydrophobic groups for the hydrophobic interaction chromatography so the addition of the salt induces the hydrophobic patches facilitate the binding of the protein to the non polar ligands attached to the matrix when the concentration of salt is decreased the exposed hydrophobic patches on the protein reduces the affinity towards the matrix and as a result it get eluted so exactly the reverse what you are supposed to do when you are supposed to uh, elute the protein you can just simply decrease the salt concentration and that's how it will actually again go back to this conditions where it will again going to take up the water from the uh, from the environment and the hydration shell is going to come back and that's how it is actually going to disrupt the interaction between the matrix as well as the hydrophobic patches present on the proteins there are different types of matrix what you are going to use you have the butyl sulfurose you have the phenyl sulfurose low substituted you have the phenyl sulfurose high substituted you have the phenyl sulfurose and then you have the ethyl sulfurose what is mean by the low substituted or the high substituted is that here you have the high amount of the phenyl groups attached to the sulfurose beads whereas here you have the uh, high uh, high high substitutions of the phenyl group uh, much more than the low substitutes which means the affinity for the low substituted is going to be lesser compared to the high substituted this is what is written so, so the functional group is phenyl and here the density is low that's why it is called as the low sub and in this case it is the phenyl group but it has the high density which means this is going to have the low affinity and this is going to have the high affinity now choosing a suitable hiz matrix is essential to achieve the best results the strength of the binding of an analyte on hiz camel is governed by the length of the aliphatic linear chain matrix with the aromatic ring containing ligand makes additional pi pi interactions so if you have the aliphatic side chains which means if you have the aliphatic uh, uh, groups attached to the matrix you are going to have the lower affinity if you have the aromatic then it is going to show the additional interactions with the uh, uh, hydrophobic patches present on the protein and that's how it is going to have the higher affinity depending on how much your protein can withstand the salt concentration and how much you can be able to uh, affinity you require to uh, bind the your protein of interest you can be able to choose the pro, the matrix which are containing the aliphatic side chains or the aromatic side chains uh because the pi pi interaction always gives the selectivity such as the ring containing aromatic ligands phenylalanines okay so because the additional advantage of using the uh, uh, the aromatic uh, or the ring containing groups are that it also gives you the selectivity because the phenylalanine like for example has more affinity or the selectivity to bind to the 
ring containing amino uh, groups present onto the matrix compared to the aliphatic amino acids. At last, the ligand density plays a vital role in strength of the binding of analytes to the matrix. Hence, these points should be considered to choose a suitable matrix for the purification. One thing what you have to remember is that the HIC always utilizes the uh, hydrophobic interactions between the groups present onto the um, onto the matrix as well as the hydrophobic patches present onto the proteins and these interactions are very strong. So, you cannot choose a matrix which is also very very densely packed with the group otherwise what will happen is it is actually going to bind the protein and then it is this binding is going to be irreversible or it will not get eluted even if you reduce the salt concentrations and in those conditions you will not be able to recover the protein from the column. So, this is what you have to do, you have a HIC matrix where you have a functional groups, then what you, you have a protein, what you do is first maintain the high salt concentrations, once you maintain the high salt concentrations, the protein hydrophobic groups are going to be exposed and as a result it will go and bind to the matrix. So, it will bind to the matrix in the presence of the high salt concentration and then slowly you can reduce the salt concentrations either in a step gradient or a linear gradient and that actually is going to uh, reduce the affinity of the bound protein to the salt and that, uh, that the reduction in the affinity is going to be differential for the different proteins and that is how the protein is going to be eluted and the column is going to be free to perform the chromatography. Again, you have the multiple steps to perform the HIC columns. First step is the equilibrations. In the equilibrium, you take the HIC column and equilibrate with a buffer containing 0.5 to 1.5 molar ammonium sulphate. So, ammonium sulphate is being used as a salt so that it is going to do the salting in effect to the proteins and on the other hand it is also going to provide the suitable environment so that the protein is going to show the hydrophobic patches or going to expose the hydrophobic patches and that is how it is going to bind to the matrix. This, this salt concentration whatever you are using 0.5 to 1.5 molar should be the concentration where it should not have the salting ion effect otherwise the, once you add the ammonium sulphate it is going to precipitate the protein from the solutions. Now once the equilibration is over you can do the sample preparation. The, for the sample preparation the, the precautions remain the same that you have to prepare the sample in the mobile phase which means in this case the buffer containing 0.5 to 1.5 molar ammonium sulphate and you have to avoid the clogging of the column which means your sample should be free of suspended particles, free of dust particles and free of the precipitated proteins otherwise it is going to clog the column and the flow rate of the column is going to be affected if you do not have the uh, 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 samples free of the, uh, the debris. The most recommended method to apply the sample is to inject the sample with a syringe. So, this is only applicable if you are using a protein purification system and you are would like to utilize the, uh, the loops and other things. So, then you have to use the syringe otherwise you can manually load the sample. Then you have to do the elutions. So, there are many ways to elute analytes from the hydrophobic interaction column. The most popular is to decrease the salt concentrations. So, once you decrease the salt concentrations, it is actually going to bring the hydration shell and that is how the hydrophobic patches are going to be hidden from the hydrophobic patches are going to be hidden and they will not be available for making an interaction with the groups present onto the HIC matrix and that is how you can be able to uh, elude the proteins. The second is that changing the polarity of the mobile phase such as you can bring the alcohol. So, normally what we are using, we are using the buffer which is prepared in water, but if you want you can also use the alcohol uh, for elutions as well 
uh, in fact sometimes people are using the uh, more uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, solvents such as acetone and other things because as I said you know if you do not choose the, uh, the appropriate uh, matrix the, the protein may bind to the matrix and then it may not be able to elute even by bringing the salt concentration 0. In those cases only you are going to use the other polar solvents such as alcohol and acetone, but the only disadvantage is once you uh, bring the uh, elution into the alcohol or acetone, the protein may not maybe come out from the column, but it may, it, it may get denatured. So, the, the people are using the uh, changing the solvent as well means bringing the more polar solvent, but that is always giving the denatured protein. Sometimes people are always also using the detergent to uh, denature the protein and that is how they are actually also can be eluted from the column. Now once the uh, uh, column running is over, you have to regenerate the column. So after the elution of analyte, the HIC column requires a regeneration step to use for the next time. The column is washed with the 6 polar urea or gonadinium hydrochloride to remove all non-specifically bound proteins, the column is then equilibrated with the mobile phase to regenerate the column and ultimately the column can be stored in 4 degree in the presence of 20 percent alcohol containing 0 0.05 percent sodium azide because you do not want this column to be uh, you know to any kind of bacteria or other microorganism to grow because most of these columns are made up of, of sugar. So, uh, you just add to have the 20 percent alcohol and containing the uh, antimicrobial substance such as the sodium azide. So, this is all about the uh, uh, hydrophobic interaction chromatography. So, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the ion exchange chromatography, we have discussed about the hydrophobic interaction chromatography and in our subsequent lecture we are also going to discuss about the gel filtration chromatography as well as the affinity chromatography. So, with this I would like to conclude our lecture here. Thank you.